Guys, it's time to grab your acrylic paints because we're going to create a quick and simple acrylic painting in one sitting. Hello there everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and in this lesson we're going to create an acrylic painting of a few limes arranged in an interesting way on panel uh, using acrylic paints and we're going to do this painting in one sitting and I'd like to encourage you to paint alongside of me as well. If you're new to the channel, I would encourage you to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you're notified when new videos like this are uploaded. And if you want to take your drawing and painting skills to another level, I encourage you to check out the membership program over at thevirtualinstructor.com. The membership program includes a variety of drawing and painting courses on a variety of subject matter and media, including acrylic painting. We also have live lessons that are broadcast live each week where users can interact and watch the process in real time. All of those, of course, are recorded and stored in our vault. They go all the way back to 2012 since I started streaming. Uh, there are weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute where I critique a user's piece of artwork and you can learn loads from that. And there's also a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers, which includes all the resources you need to teach for an entire year. If you want to learn more about the membership program, of course, there's a link in the description below. You can go check it out. And everyone starts out with a week-long trial for free, so I'd take advantage of that if I were you. If you want to just dabble a little bit and uh, take a look at a few of the course videos and eBooks for free, you can do that as well. I'll leave a link in the description below for that as well. With that being said, let's go ahead and, and dive into this process. For this simple painting, I'll be working on gessoed panel. This is a small painting measuring only four inches by four inches. I'll be using acrylic paints, and for this particular painting, I'll be using Liquitex heavy body acrylics. I'll be using Grumbacher golden edge nylon brushes. We'll use a couple of flats and a small round. And I'll also be using glazing medium in part of the process. If you don't have any glazing medium, you can get away with substituting a little bit of water. The specific colors I'll be using are yellow oxide, burnt umber, titanium white, alizarin crimson, Payne's gray, ultramarine, cerulean blue, lemon yellow, cadmium yellow, sap green, and Indian yellow. And I'll also link to all the materials that I'm using in the description below this video. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna prepare our panel by creating a, a toned ground. So right now it's just the white that it came in. It's primed with gesso. And we're gonna add just a, a value here to the surface. So our goal is to kind of create a middle gray. It's not gonna be gray. We're gonna have a warmer, um, a warmer ground to start with but first we need to prepare the surface and just put a layer of that color in place so to do this we're just going to mix up a little bit of color here i'm going to use a little bit of yellow oxide and a little bit of burnt umber so this will give us a nice base color here so a little bit of brown a little bit of yellow and with a, just a touch of water we'll just mix those colors together then we're going to apply a pretty liberal application here to the panel. Now you can use whatever color you want for the ground. I kind of like using this, we'll call it yellow ochreish color quite a bit. If we were to take the color out of this and you would only see this as black and white, it would be somewhat of a middle gray. We also don't need to worry about the brush strokes, but I might go back and make those a little bit more uniform in just a second once we get the color in place. It doesn't matter if the if the brush strokes are visible or not. 
course, we're going to be covering all of this up anyway. But what this does is it allows us to start with a nice medium value instead of starting with just the white of the gesso. Um, and it's going to help us make color and value comparisons when we start adding the color here for this particular painting. If we start with a white surface, we're basically starting on one end of the value scale. We have to push the values darker throughout the process. Uh, but when we start in a with a neutral value, even though this is kind of a yellow ochre, it's not a gray, but again, if we were to take the color out, it would be kind of a middle gray. That allows us to kind of start somewhere in the middle of the value scale and push the values outward, adding both light values and dark values. So we're going to let this dry for a moment, and then we'll come back and start the painting process. All right, now that we've got our panel ready to go, we're going to use a little bit of Payne's Gray and do a quick little sketch of the basic uh, areas of shadow that we see uh, here, just using uh, a regular old filbert brush here. Uh, so a little bit of water, too. Grab a little bit of Payne's Gray. and Payne's Gray is a wonderful, cool gray. It's almost a black. And like I said, we're going to concentrate mainly on the shapes of darker value, but we're also going to kind of sketch things out a little bit. So I, I see that the shadow is right in the middle of uh, the picture plane for the most part. So I'm going to kind of start with that. And these marks can be pretty loose, of course, and our sketch can be pretty loose. Uh, we're just going to kind of concentrate on sketching things out real loosely and lightly with the paints gray. And just keep in mind that everything that we paint can be painted over. So don't feel a lot of pressure to make anything exact at this point. We're just going to kind of feel out where everything is here on our panel. And we're not going to worry about the brush strokes either. They don't have to be perfect or anything. This is just kind of uh, somewhat of an underpainting that we're creating here. The first edge of that lemon up at the top kind of comes out of the top of the picture plane somewhere around here. And then we'll just allow that to come down. I'm using the edge of the, the brush here to do some of the lines. And looking at the edge of the picture plane as well to figure out where the edge of that line exists and get a good idea of how far down it comes to on the picture plane. Now, if you feel more comfortable sketching this out with a, uh, a graphite pencil or something like that, by all means, feel free to do that. Put a little bit of shadow there to indicate that this line has half of it in light and half of it in shadow. Now we'll start to define that lime here at the bottom. Again, don't put too much pressure on yourself. Anything that's not as accurate as you would like it to be, remember that we can paint right over the top of that. We're using opaque acrylic paint, of course. Looks like to me that the middle of the picture plane is about where we see the top edge of that, this lime right here. And we've got some core shadow on the body of this line too, so we'll go ahead and put a little bit of indication of that too. Remember, this is kind of just a sketch for us so that we can have an idea of where our shadows are going to be located. Getting a little too much water there in my, in my paint, so grab a little bit more paint there and make it a little bit thicker. Just thinking about the shapes of shadow that I see. And this line over here on the right side creates such an interesting cast shadow. We're going to try to create this painting in a way where our marks, our brush strokes are pretty fresh looking. So we're not going to overwork things with tons of detail or anything like that. 
We're going to create this entire painting in one sitting. Or if you're me, in one standing. I am standing up. <laughs> in one session, I should say. I'm going to go right in the middle of this area where the shadow is the darkest and just make that a little bit stronger here. And remember, we'll be going back over the top of all of these shadowed areas. This is not our final shadow color, and it's probably not even the final shadow shape either. Just kind of getting an idea for composition here. And don't feel too much pressure to make the shapes exactly like the reference. Of course, we're trying to get them close, but we shouldn't feel pressure to make them exact here. We're not creating a photorealistic painting at all. Now you can take an underpainting as far as you want. You can make it completely full of make it completely with a full range of value if you want and then add glazes over the top that's not the approach we're going to take here but that's definitely an approach that you can take that type of painting is called indirect painting what we're doing here is somewhat somewhere in the in between it's really more of a form of direct painting I've just got a little bit of paint on my brush here and I'm just going to get an idea of some of these values here that exist on the inside of the lime that's exposed. Again, nothing needs to be perfect, just loose, pretty loose interpretation. All right, now we're going to mix up a green, and I'm going to use a bit of cadmium yellow here first, and then a little bit of ultramarine. All right, let's mix these colors together and see what kind of green we get here. And that's not too bad of a mixture there. So we'll start here with this guy since that's where we see the bulk of the peel. And for right now, I'm just going to kind of concentrate on putting this color down and feeling in the shape. All right, let's add a little bit more yellow to some of the areas that are on the top edge, closer to the highlight. 
Again, just going to put some bigger, bolder strokes here. We want this painting to be a little bit more impressionistic. This is a quick, quick study of these limes, if you will. There's definitely a little bit more yellow right in this area, so put some stronger marks here. Just a little bit of imperfection there on the, the skin of the lime. We'll put a little bit more of it up here too. All right, now let's darken up the shadow a little bit. We'll go back over here and grab a little bit of our paints gray, a little bit more of the blue, and just a touch of our green to make kind of a darker, cooler version. And then we have this core shadow right in about this area here. And as we need to make it darker or lighter, we can add a little bit more of the paints gray. Now, the reason why I'm using paints gray instead of black is because black can can make colors feel a little bit unnatural. Um, but a color like paints gray will make uh, the color a little bit darker, make the value a little bit darker without really making it feel unnatural. So it's kind of a, like I said before, it's kind of a cool gray a dark cool gray and for a color like green where we make green by adding blue and yellow together it makes sense that the shadowed areas on a green object are going to kind of lean a little bit more bluish or a little bit cooler just like the paint paints gray gives us And we shouldn't forget about this area of shadow, this area of cast shadow right up here. Now, once we get some of the other values in place, we might have to come back and adjust these. But for right now, this is not a bad place to start. Go a little bit darker here in this core shadow. Just a little heavier amount of Payne's Gray. Okay, so we're a little bit further ahead in the process here, and um, what happened, I had a little bit of an interruption and then went back to painting without pushing the record button. So we're back into it now, but <laughs> basically just to catch you up to speed here, um, we've just added uh, 
a bit of different varieties of greens here. Uh, we added a little bit of the cast shadow, uh, or we made the cast shadow a little bit stronger, and then we put a little bit of a reflected highlight in there as well. Uh, we went ahead and put some of the greens on the outer edges of the other limes. Uh, we're talking probably about four or five minutes here. And uh, now we're adding the color to the inside portion of the limes. And the color I'm using here is one that I mixed up a combination of uh, lemon yellow. So I brought in lemon yellow now at this point, and we're using a little bit of lemon yellow. There's also a little bit of cerulean blue over here as well. And I'm mixing this with the white and a touch of the paints gray to just neutralize it and bring it down just a little bit. Uh, so obviously this needs to be lighter in value than what's happening on the inside. And my green is a little bit more green than what we have in the reference. So I'm gonna be able to go over the top of that with uh, some of the yellows that we have and warm it up in just a minute. But this is not a bad base color to start with. And I'm just kind of defining the wedges here. We're gonna, of course gonna go back in with uh, different varieties and uh, make this a little bit more interesting. But for right now, we'll go ahead and get some of these colors in place. And again, I'm just painting the wedges here. You don't have to paint it in this way. You can fill in the entire area if you want. And then define all the little wedges with your subsequent applications. It's completely up to you. Now, of course, this side of the wedge is in shadow. So we'll make it just a slight bit darker. And some of that some of that uh, underpainting that we've put down will show through. Just a touch of it. We really want to pull out the light in this particular painting. All right, uh, I mentioned that we're going to create a little bit of variety up here, so let's do that now. Now, I've been using this larger brush this whole time. Uh, now I'm finally going to switch over to a slightly smaller one. And this brush is uh, just very much slightly smaller, and it's going to be a round brush here. So uh, we're going to go ahead and make some of these uh, values in here a little bit darker and some a little bit lighter. We're still going to concentrate on the little wedges. Then we'll go back in there and put some of those uh, lines that exist in between them. So uh, let's go ahead and start by making uh, some of the values a little bit darker. So we'll get our lemon yellow mixture here and uh, maybe just a touch of the sap green and then we'll just start making some a little bit of variety in here and it doesn't have to be exactly like the reference of course we're going to have some areas where uh, it's darker in some areas where it's lighter, so we're basically just kind of creating a pattern that kind of mimics what we see in the reference. And this will make those light marks that we put on later in the process pop a little bit more because we'll have a little bit of a darker value behind it. We're also going to add some lighter values in just a minute. And these values are just subtly different. That's really all we need, just a little subtle difference. Remember, we're not going for photorealism here. We're just kind of creating an interesting painting, kind of more of an impressionistic kind of feel. Let's do the same thing with the darker values on the line that's down here. And on the shadowed side, we can make those a little bit darker than what we've got on the highlighted side. All right, let's add a little bit of a lighter 
variety and also one that's a little bit more yellow. So again, this is mostly the lemon yellow here. Again, I'm not looking for specifics here. I'm just kind of getting a general idea of where we might see some light and dark values and just playing with it on the surface. So um, not trying to replicate it exactly. Just trying to create some kind of fresh marks here. Let's do the same down here. Again, this is the lighter side of the lime. So we, we got a little bit more freedom to make some of the values a little bit lighter on this side. Again, keeping things pretty loose and fresh here. And even on the shadowed side here, let's have a little bit more variety. And if you get too light like I did, you can always go back and make it a little bit darker. All right, we've got those rond pieces. <clears throat> I'm not sure if it's rond pieces or not, but it's the, the lighter parts that go on the outside uh, here, right on the inside of the skin, and also that go towards the center. And uh, you might think, well, we need to make that white, but it's really not white. It's kind of a light off-white. So uh, let's go ahead and see if we can mix something up that's going to be close. We want to keep it kind of in the light green. Uh, but obviously a lot lighter, so I'm going to grab mostly white, but it is still a pretty light, neutral-ish green. And I'll just start here and see if that's light enough. That's nowhere near light enough, so we'll grab a little bit more white. And let's add a little bit of yellow to this to see if we can create a little bit more contrast. And with this, I'm using a little bit more of the cadmium yellow. I actually want a little bit more of that into in the little pieces here. I have to pull some of that in. All right now, let's go ahead and go all the way around the edges here. And I'm using a pretty good amount of water too, so that this flows rather easily. If you use too much water, you'll know it because the paint will start just kind of going its own way. <laughs> um, and it will sit on the surface and not really stick either. So I'm going to have a, a nice kind of medium a happy medium there where the paint is fluid enough to move but um, of course not so fluid that it won't stick to the surface
All right, we're going to go back and make some of those values a little bit lighter on the top. But for now, let's go ahead and go into this bottom. Or I should say the, the lime on the right. You can see a hint of it even in the shadowed side of those lighter, that lighter rind or whatever that part of the lime is. All right, let's go back and add some hints of some lighter values. Again, this is almost, almost pure white, but not quite. All right, let's do the same thing down on this lime, although it's not as strong, but I'm going to make mine a little bit stronger. That will make the light feel a little bit stronger as well. We'll clean that edge up a little bit when we paint the background. All right, while we've got some lighter values mixed up, let's go ahead and, and hit this uh, first line and put a few of the highlights here, some of the stronger highlights. Those look a little watery. We might have to hit them a little bit more with a stronger application. Let's go ahead and lift that up a little bit and make sure that our paint is a little bit thicker. Again, want to try to find that happy medium where the paint is thin enough to be controlled on the surface, but also thick enough to stick. A little bit in that reflected highlight over there. And that's a little strong on both of those sections so once I put a little bit of color down I can just kind of lift it up with a paper towel here before it dries completely and put a little bit of that indication of that reflected highlight right there and if it's too strong knock it back with a little bit of the sap green There we go. I like, I like how the texture is developing there with that minimal effort. <laughs> I know I said we're not going to put many details, and we're not, but we can pull out a little bit more of that indication of the texture there with just a few extra marks here.
definitely without going overboard. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back and put a little bit of a light glaze, uh, yellowy glaze over the top of these open areas. Uh, but for right now, let's go ahead and uh, paint in some of the colors of the background. So that's gonna give us some contrast, obviously between the greens that we have in place and uh, it'll help us make better decisions about what we need to do on the limes themselves as we uh, finish up this painting. So let's go ahead and switch over and start mixing up some of the colors for the background. All right, so you can see I've kind of got a mess here on my palette, uh, but I'm gonna move it so that I can keep kind of my green colors out of the way of the colors that I'm getting ready to add here to the surface. Now we're gonna create a pink background that's gonna give us good contrast between the green limes, obviously, and the red background. And uh, we want this to be kind of a pinky color, um, kind of a cooler pink, actually. So I'm gonna actually start with alizarin crimson and titanium white and see if that doesn't give us the, the pink that we're after. If this pink ends up being a little bit too cool, um, then we'll add a little bit of cadmium red in there, warm it up. But uh, we'll start with this and see what we got. Of course, we're going to use the Payne's Gray to make the values a little bit darker and maybe make them a little bit more purpley too. So let's go ahead and mix this up here and um, switch back to that larger filbert brush that I was using and actually need to clean my water because as you can see i've got green water that's no good so i'll do that real quick and we'll be right back okay now with some clean water and pull a little bit of that alizarin crimson down my brush wasn't totally clean but <laughs> that's okay and that's creating a pretty nice pink that's pretty close to what we want here all right, so as I mentioned before, we're gonna use the background applications to kind of frame out our limes. So I'm gonna get a little bit of a thicker mixture going on here. And then as we go around the edges, we can use the edge of the brush to define the edge of the lime there, see that? And now we get a better understanding of the greens we have in place as well. Let's go ahead and go around the edge of this lime at the top here. And I'm also going to kind of stop at the shadow too. You know, we have just a, a hint of a little bit of a, a darker pink, <laughs> which a darker pink is a red, um, right in that little, that little indention, little section that goes in there. We'll come back to the shadows in just a minute. But for now, we'll go ahead and apply this light pink to all of these open areas. And pink, if you did not pick up on what I just said, is a version of red. It's a value of red. So uh, red and green are directly across from each other on the color wheel. That makes them complementary colors. So they provide high contrasts when you use them together. So that is why I have chosen to do the background pink. And uh, the original photo did not have a pink background. I added the, I manipulated the colors for they so they would work for me. I manipulated the greens on the limes as well. This is a photo I took. And uh, of course, when you take your own photos, which I highly encourage you to do. Sometimes they don't always come out the way that you want them to. So I always used Photoshop to enhance them and make them the way that I want them to be.
so that I can use them as the reference that they were intended to be used as. Now you can make your background very brush strokey if you want to. You can have a lot of variety in this pink. So you can have a little bit more uh, of a lighter version in areas if you want. Maybe have some streaks of the alizarin crimson showing through. It's completely up to you. Now we're going to treat these areas of shadow as their own distinct shapes. So that's kind of why I'm working around them right now with this pink. And again, while I'm trying to make these shapes match the reference as closely as possible, I'm also not putting too much pressure on myself to make it perfect. We want to have that handmade look in our painting, which I find so attractive in looking at paintings is to tell that it was made by a human being. <laughs> and you can see the marks that the artist made. I think that's important. All right, now let's mix up a, a shadow color. Um, actually, I just want to touch up a few of these areas with the brush strokes. Cover up the ground completely. I might could have made this pink a little bit lighter, although I think that this color works just fine. All right, let's go ahead and mix up some of the shadow colors. So. We'll switch back out over here, and uh, we're going to add a little bit of paints gray, um, which I still have some on my palette here, to our red. And again, this is alizarin crimson, and I have too much white in my brush, so I'm going to clean that off, and then we'll go back and grab the alizarin crimson and the paints gray. And that's going to give us a perfect, perfect color for the shadow. It's a darker version, a darker version of the Elizabeth Crimson, but it's also even cooler because we're mixing it with Payne's Gray instead of black. All right, let's go ahead and start applying this to the shadowed areas and it looks like this area right here is actually a little bit darker so I know I just put a mark down here we'll go ahead and fill that in but this I think is going to be a little bit lighter in the end And it may be hard to tell, but you can probably see that the underpainting where we painted all those dark values is kind of working for us to a certain degree here because uh, it's we're not having to work as hard to paint some of these darker tones. Lizard and Crimson is somewhat of a transparent color, so it kind of work as a glaze to a certain degree. We have mixed it with Payne's Gray, which is not a translucent color.
Well, you can do so much with a larger brush. You don't have to always reach for that smaller brush. Sometimes you feel like when you're working in a, a real small area that you need to have that smaller brush, but that can almost backfire on you. Start putting too much detail and start trying to overwork things a little bit. All right, I'm going to make this just a little bit of a stronger application there. So we covered up all of our underpainting here. So now we're going to create kind of a transition color. So we're going to create a third color, and we want it to be somewhere in between this dark alizarin crimson and this light pink. So we're just going to mix those two together then. And then we can see where the, the shadow kind of becomes a little bit more of a transition, and that's where we're going to apply this color. A little bit of it out here as well. And I'm going to add another coat of that because that alizarin crimson is just still a little bit too transparent for my liking. We'll clean up all those edges in just a second, too. Okay, so in the background, around where we've just painted, we're going to add a little bit more of that pink and clean up these edges, light pink. And you can go back and forth as many times as you wish until you have the edges and the color and value relationships that you want in your painting.
All right, down here I need to make that shadow a little bit more consistent here. So I'm going to add a little bit of the darker, the darker lizard crimson. You can see I put a, put a big old patch of lighter on there. So um, we need to uh, fix that. There we go. There, just a little bit more consistent. And it may be hard to see it on the video, but uh, it is kind of coming through as a dark purple in those areas of shadow. All right, uh, just as I said, we're probably gonna go back and do some more work to the limes themselves now that we've got some of the background color in place, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. Uh, first of all, you can see that we need to kind of touch up this edge here. So I'm gonna go back to the sap green with a little bit of Payne's Gray. And we'll also make this core shadow a little bit stronger here as well. just to give that lime a little bit more of a feeling of being three-dimensional. No indication of texture here as well. All right, I also said that we were gonna maybe do some glazing and I think we're ready for a little bit of glaze. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of yellow up here to the open fleshy areas. Um, and to do this, I'm gonna use um, a transparent color called Indian yellow. So uh, we'll get a little bit of that here on the palette. And there's my Indian yellow way up there on its own. And I'm actually gonna use uh, a, a medium to apply it, I'm gonna use glazing medium. And here's a look at uh, my glazing medium here. You can see it's a fluid medium. I'm just gonna use a little bit of that with the Indian yellow, and uh, that's gonna create a nice glaze for us to go over the top of these areas, and make them just feel a little bit more yellowish. So here on my palette, I'm just gonna pour out a little bit of that glazing medium, and that is more than enough. If you don't have glazing medium, you can use a little bit of water if you're careful. I'm going to use a softer nylon brush here. This is a flat. And grab a, just a little bit of the color, mostly the medium. And then we can just swipe this right over the top. We might need a little bit more of the color. I'm just going to give it a light glaze and make those areas feel a little bit warmer. Now you can really see it in the light areas. We're going to go back over the top of those light areas and make them feel a little bit more neutral in just a minute, but you can really see the glaze in those areas. It's a little bit harder to tell in the green areas, but you can kind of compare. We can see this area compared to that one. It's definitely a little bit more yellow. Now you can glaze with just about any color that is labeled as transparent. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of glaze to this lime over here as well. 
just to make it feel a little bit more harmonious with the other guys. a pretty subtle difference but it is a difference nonetheless all right let's do some more work on the flesh of uh, the limes here um, and that's going to be adding a little bit more variety um, and also making some of the white areas and I say that in quotations just a little bit stronger so I'm going to grab a little bit of our light yellow green here and let it be mostly mostly dominated by the white and then we'll go back into our middle portion up here and that will go right over the top of that glaze we just applied Pull a few of those lines towards the center. You don't have to go all the way in. And then we'll do the same here on this guy down here. We're essentially just broadening the range of value here. We're creating some more lights. So they contrast a little bit more with the lights that we, or the darks that we have. Let's make these little stronger highlights up here a little bit stronger. couple more, maybe some smaller ones. There we go. All right, now there are some highlights that happen in the wet part. So we will we'll address those with pure white or almost pure white here. Still pulling from the uh, from the light yellow green. So it kind of look like a white, but it's not exactly a white. And that's a good thing because we don't, we don't really want to have a white. White will make things a little bit too cool. But it needs to almost be white. <laughs> We won't put quite as many as we see, but we'll put enough to matter. Put a few down here as well. And of course, we could keep going with this painting, but I kind of like uh, the freshness that it has here. And I think I'm going to stop with the painting here. Um, I do think it makes a, a nice complement to 
the orange painting that I did a while back, and I'll leave a link to that uh, in the description below this video if you want to go check that out. Uh, so kind of a little series here developing here with my oranges and my limes. And of course, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little demonstration. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were able to pick up a couple of things here and there. Remember, if you like this video, make sure that you give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I'd encourage you to do that. There's more to discover over at thevirtualinstructor.com. Remember, I've left a link below for you if you want to check it out. And as always, I wish you all the very best in your artistic success. Yeah.